In this video, I want to talk a little, little bit about constraints. Constraints are a really, really handy way of adding props to your rigs. Um, all animators should know how to use these. Definitely all riggers should know how to use these. Um, we're looking at here this model of Tuna, and I've modeled a bike helmet, a strap for his, um, a kind of a special strap, but a stra strap to keep the helmet on, and a backpack, which I didn't bother doing straps because I got lazy. Uh, it's just for demonstration purposes. Um, I have them labeled over here, backpack, helmet, helmet strap. Each one of these I want to have clean, be clean geometry, so frozen transformations and deleted history. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'll do it the hard way, edit, delete by type history, modify and freeze transformations, and they should all be nice and zeroed out. We want all our models to be named and clean. I'm going to go ahead and save this out like this. I'm going to slide to the side real quick and just let's look at a basic demonstration here of what, how constraints work. So if I want to connect two objects together, we typically just do parenting, right? I take this object, middle mouse click, drag it underneath this one. Now there's a hierarch hierarchical relationship. And now whatever this one does, the other one has to do. Um, it's one-sided, of course. So um, if I move this one, it can do whatever it wants. But this one, the child is required to do what the parent does. This is great for a lot of situations. But in rigging, this isn't so great. Um, mostly because what we're trying to do, if I go back to Tuna here, um, if we want to connect something to the character, you'd have to connect it to a control or the skin or something like this. And as soon as you start dumping models and props underneath these controls, you're messing with the rig. And unless you're the rigger that, unless you are the rigger, that's really dangerous. You can easily break a rig or mess with something that you shouldn't be. But more importantly, you know, once this is underneath the controls, so I put like a basketball here or a wristwatch. Um, now, if I were to hide all the controls, it's going to hide the prop too. So in general, this is not a helpful thing to do. Um, using constraints, though, allows us to create those same types of relationships that we would get with parenting without actually having the geometry inside the rig, um, or at least being controlled by things we don't want it to be. It just gives you a lot more control. The nice thing, too, is it's really fast to calculate, so it doesn't uh, it's not heavy on your rig. Your rig will still work quickly and efficiently. Um, I'm going to show you in these blocks the basic constraints that we're going to be looking at. After I show you the basic constraints here as samples, I'll show you how this works over on Tuna with his actual props. The uh, constraint menu is under the rigging module. So if you just go over here and click on rigging or press F3, you can jump over there and you'll see constraints right here. I'm going to rip off the menu. Now, there's actually quite a few constraints you can work with. We're not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to show you the main ones that are most useful to rigging uh, just to keep this short and sweet. So one thing to know when you do a constraint, you want to make sure you click on the parent first and then the child after. Um, when you do a parent parenting operation, it's usually the opposite. So let's keep that in mind for constraints. Um, so left side here are going to be my parents. The right side here are going to be my children. So I'm going to select, we're just going to start with the first one, parent, and I'm going to click on the object here, shift and click on the second object here. If you're doing it in the outliner, holding control instead. I'm going to choose parent option box. And over here, um, it's a good idea if you're on a public computer or it's not a computer you're familiar with, or even if you are, go ahead and hit reset just so you get the basic operations here. The main thing you want to have clicked on here is maintain offset, which will keep these objects in their current space. If you have this off and you do the operation, it'll snap their center points together, which is typically not what you want. You can do just translate, just rotate, both of them. You'll notice there's no scale here like for a normal parenting operation. I don't know why they don't include that. I'd really love it if they did. It is separate and available over here though if you want it. I'm going to hit apply. And now what you'll see, I can close this down is when I translate this, it works just like a normal parent. It moves that, and when I rotate it, it moves it to scaling does nothing, at least doesn't scale this one at the same time. It does move it though, because it's in its in this uh, object's local space. And that's how it works. Super easy, super clean. And you'll notice over here on the side that the objects stay separate. They don't have to be in the same group together. They don't have to be anywhere even close to each other 
in the Outliner, which is great. And if any, you'll also notice here on our constrained object that the translates and rotates turn blue, letting us know that they are constrained in some way. Um, if you go down here to the bottom, you should be able to see the parent constraint down here, and it will tell you right here, P cube one is what it's connected to. It even gives you a weight right here, which you can turn to zero, which actually turns the weight off. And now it doesn't have any function. So that's another thing about constraints. You can turn them on and off. They even animatable, which is great. Let's do the next set. These ones are going to be point constraint. Point constraint is just like parent. Again, I'm going to choose the option box just to reset it. I'll hit apply. Aha. Well, I guess it's a good sample. You'll notice that it jumped over here. And that is because um, I had maintain offset turned off. So now it did put the cubes on top of each other, but now they are locked together. I'm going to undo that. And this time, I'm going to do it correctly. And I'm going to hold and maintain offset and hit apply. And now, whenever I move this, it moves the other one. But if I rotate or scale it, it does nothing. Those parts aren't connected. So it allows us to isolate certain attributes. Um, it's your choice to have this on. Sometimes you do want them to be snapped right on top of each other. It's actually a convenient way to snap things, too. Um, I forgot to mention the first one that there is a weight option. You could actually turn a constraint on with zero weight and then turn it on later. Um, this is useful for animation purposes. Moving onward, we have orient and scale. You can start and get the idea of what these are. If I turn, click on this and this and hit the scale, I will do orient, sorry. Um, again, maintain offset is likely what you want. I'm going to hit apply, especially with rotate. And now they rotate together, but I can translate them wherever they want. And they're still connected. That one actually is a little bit more useful. You can think of, I can maybe connect the steering wheel of a car to the, uh, um, the tires of a car to actually steer them. There's probably better ways to do it, but this way does actually work. And you can choose in your options here um, which rotations are connected or all of them. And again, we have that weight function there. I'm going to go ahead and skip scale constraint and assume that you can probably figure that one out on your own. Uh, the options for this are exactly the same as the other ones and it connects scale. The aim constraint though is a really cool one. I'm definitely going to show this one to you. Uh, the aim constraint connects translation information to rotation information, whereas the scale, orient, point, and parent all are connecting translate to translate, rotate to rotate, scale to scale. So this one's a little bit different. This one's best just seen. I'm going to click on, uh, actually I'll make one of these objects a little bit different. Let's make this one a little bit longer and more narrow. All right. I'm going to go ahead and click on this one first, the parent, and click on this one, the child. Aim, always want to go and check your settings. This is one of the ones if you don't have maintain offset, um, which it defaults to, you're going to be very upset. So, or just annoyed, you won't be upset. Um, so you definitely want maintain offset on here for this to work correctly. I'll show you a couple other settings in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. Um, what happens now is when I move this one object, the other one always tries to follow, to look at it. This might seem kind of familiar, right? Over here, if I move this control around, the eyes are going to try to follow it. It's the same constraint here. The cool thing is you can move the the uh, parent here, or you can actually move the child, and it will also try to stay and look at the parent no matter what. It's always looking at it. Really, really cool feature, really helpful for a lot of things. Um, this is actually one that I'll use for armor. Like if I have a piece of armor in here, and when the arm moves up and down, I'll put a point here on the, on the wrist that it can look at, and it will always rotate with the arm because it's trying to look at the wrist. So really handy for that type of thing. Um, one thing that's good to know here, there's this up vector. Um, the up vector is telling as this rotates around, um, which part of the object should be pointing up or be trying to point up. You'll notice that when I get down here, it's having trouble because the part is trying to point up, which is the Y axis, uh, can't. So it doesn't quite know what to do there. But anywhere up here, it does a good job. You can switch this and make the up vector be X, Y, or Z. And that other part of the object then will try to point up instead. I'm going to skip over pole vector two. This is used in rigging uh, during the rigging process, not this kind of final process. 
um, to do knees. So this is a pull vector constraint here. It works with joints only. So right now we're just working with skin. Um, so we're going to pretend this is a badge here. Let me zero that out. Not that it actually matters. I'm just an orthentive. Um, so let's say I want to attach this badge to his shirt. Well, a constraint doesn't quite work here. If I were to go ahead and put it over here, line it up on his skin, or attempt to. So let's say I lined it up here. I like that positioning. I don't, but I'm just going to go with it. So I'm going to go ahead and constrain it. Um, this is the main control for doing rotations along the body. So if I were to kind of constrain it to this one using a parent constraint, what you're going to find is, is that it's going to go, it's not going to look right here. It's f coming out the body because the body is actually weighted and that skin's distorting. So you're going to get it going through the body, around the body. I just want it to follow the skin. This is what roots, uh, rivets, excuse me, what rivets do best. So I'm going to undo that. We're going to put this back where it was. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put a rivet on the skin. The cool thing about rivets is they follow the skin wherever it goes. So I'm just going to choose a vertex on here. I'm going to choose this spot right here about where that is going to end up. I'm just going to click on rivet. And it's going to throw in, in this case because the model is kind of small, it's going to throw in a locator. In this case, kind of a huge one. You can scale it if you want. And what you'll see here is now is that uh, that locator moves with the skin. No matter what control you use, it's always going to follow the skin. So now all I have to do is, I'm going to lock off that mesh so I can't click on it. All I have to do now is take this badge and snap it. I'm going to use V to snap. Snap it to this point, line it up nicely. And now all I have to do is parent constrain it to the locator. So I'll just click on the locator first then shift and click on the badge and parent. And now wherever this mesh goes, that badge goes to and is stuck on it perfectly. It doesn't even matter what control you have. Now, if I go far enough, it's going to make it probably look bad at some point. Uh, but that's just because the rig isn't set up well there. That's my fault. And that's it. All you got to do when you're done there is click on the rivet, control H to hide it, and you're good to go. Um, you can even... Another nice trick here, you can see here that it's constrained, which means I can't adjust it. If you want to have adjustability, instead of constraining the object directly, let me undo that one more time. What I could do instead is press Control G to group the object to itself. I'll call this Rivet Group, and I'll choose Modify and Center Pivot. So we see here we have the Rivet Group and underneath the badge itself. I should say badge group or something like that, but that's fine. I'm now going to take the group instead of the object and snap that over here, adjust the position. And now I'm going to constrain the group, not the object itself, by holding control and grab both, hit parent. So now it looks the same, but actually what this is constraining, the rivet is constraining the group instead. The object itself is now completely animatable and completely free to do whatever you want, including make adjustments on it, which is actually nice to be able to do. So if you don't want to have it come completely off, you could just choose your translates, scales, and visibility, and I can lock and hide those by right-clicking. And now the only thing I can do in here is rotate. I can't, animator can't translate it off there, and I'm good to go. So a little extra flexibility, a little more animatab animatability. Okay, so now we understand the basic constraints. Uh, you can see that attaching the backpack and attaching the helmet is really not that big of a deal. We're just going to use parent constraint, and I'm going to constrain it to the control, um, not the joint or the skin. That's the easiest way to get this on here. It's kind of a no-brainer. So I'm just going to grab the uh, head control, shift and click on the helmet, click on parent. I know that the settings are correct because... I haven't changed them from when I showed it to you. I'll test it out, and you can see that now the strap doesn't go with them. I haven't done anything with that yet, but the uh, helmet works just fine. The if you I can't remember if I remember if I mentioned this or not, but if you make a mistake, you can always just grab the constraint over here and just delete it, and then you're right back to where you were. So good thing to know. Uh, the backpack, same thing. It's going to click on the chest control here. Shift and click on the backpack and hit parent constraint. 
and now the backpack is attached to his body. How, we don't know, because there is no strap on there, but we're pretending that that's okay. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, the one thing you want to do here is, of course, clean up stuff a little bit. So here, um, I would get rid of, um, not the helmet strap, all those cubes. The rivet group, obviously, we want to, and the badge we want to keep. This is all geometry, so all the stuff here, I would just put under my geometry group. You can put it in the original one, you can make a new one, it doesn't matter. So some people would want to make, uh, maybe just do a group these together. I'll call this props, and I'll stick it in the geometry tab. Good to go. And now it's all nice and contained. Get rid of that too. That's all there is to it. Um, you might have noticed uh, that I skipped over the strap that wasn't working. Um, this For this, we're going to use a wrap deformer. I'm going to do that in a separate video. It's super quick and easy and deserves a separate video. So that's it for constraints. Uh, you can do tons of stuff with this, full sets of body armor that are all articulate and everything like that, all with just constraints. Really easy, really fast, and fast for Maya to calculate. Great tool.